Today's story is about a young gospel phenom, gritty soulster, seductive balladeer, a chart-topping disco king, and southern soul blues legend. This vocalist was always able to adapt to the times, and he used that adaptability to build an almost four decade long career. The centerpiece of today's video is all about Johnny Taylor. Now, before we start, let's be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now, without further ado, let's cue that intro. Johnny Harrison Taylor was born on May 5th, 1934 in Crossfieldsville, Arkansas. Taylor normally listed his birth year as the year of 1938, but after his death, his social security records revealed that he was actually born four years earlier. He's the youngest of three children and was raised by his deeply devoted grandmother. His grandmother emphasized the necessities of attending church as a child. This is where he found the love of music in church, where he decided to pursue a career in music. Taylor made his vocal debut at the age of six while performing in his church choir. Taylor relocated to Kansas City, Missouri, when he was just 10 years old. Now during his teenage years, he performed in the Melody Kings, which was a Christian based group located in Kansas. The Melody Kings occasionally opened up for the legendary and influential gospel group, The Soul Steerers. Sam Cooke, the group's lead vocalist, became friends with Johnny Taylor. Taylor, who was just 19 at the time, relocated to Chicago, Illinois in 1955. Taylor performed with two groups while living in Chicago, and these groups was The Five Echoes and The Highway QCs. When Cook departed to Soul Steers in 1955, he brought in Taylor to replace him. Now officially as a member of the Soul Steers, Taylor also became an ordained pastor. Taylor's stint with the group was very brief, and in 1960, while driving the group's car, he tragically injured a child who ran onto the road. Now although the child's death was ruled an accident, it really disturbed him. So Taylor revealed to the group that at the time of the accident, he was under the influence of drugs, prompting Taylor in the group to split rays. But in 1960, Taylor's life took a dark turn when he fatally injured a small child who ran in front of the group's car while he was driving. Though it was ruled an accident, Taylor admitted to the soul stirrers that he was stoned at the time. Soon after, he and the group parted ways. Johnny was fired from the soul stirrers because he hit a girl and they got him out of that. But the soul story said, you know, this is just too much. That kind of haunted him for a long time. And that was kind of the seed of his uh, addiction. When he left the soul stories, Johnny went into the ministry. He was an ordained minister and he uh, drifted around from church to church preaching. Taylor had planned to relocate to Los Angeles to become a full-time preacher when he left the group. But Sam Cooke, who abandoned gospel music to perform secular music persuaded Taylor to become his first artist signed under his new label, Saw Records, in 1961. Although Taylor had one charted single with Saw titled, Baby We Got Love, he also had some memorable songs such as Rome. Taylor departed Sar in 1965 without a record deal following Sam Cooke's death, causing the label to fall. During his hunt for a new home, he decided to sign with Stax Records in 1965. Now, after signing with Stax, he was given the name the Philosopher of Soul. Now, Taylor remained with Stax until the label dissolved in 1975. Now, throughout these 10 years, Taylor released charted singles such as I Had a Dream. Don't you know she turned up by 
on me. I got to love somebody, baby. But I was in the dark for such a long time. Somebody sleeping in my bed. I had myself a real good woman to hear my head. Next time. I tell her that I love her so. And it was foolish of me. I ain't particular. Who's making love? I'm gonna ask it now. You better think about it twice. Why you take care of your homework? Testify? I could never be president. Love bones. No, no, I got to get on home to my love bones. I know still away. But I can't wait. Come on, stay away. Won't you let I am somebody. Still somebody. Though he gives up the wrong remedy. Jody's got your girl gone. Get ahead. Working two jobs. Dead. I don't want to lose you. And when he finished with me, you know what he told me? He said, Johnny, you don't have no hijacking love. Standing in for Jody. But the feeling just ain't there. No. Doing my own thing. Every time I turn my back, people are talking about. Stop dogging me. Stop it, baby. Stop it, baby. Stop dogging me around. I believe in you. Oh, I, I, I feel sorry. I feel sh cheaper to keep her. Say it, y'all. It's cheaper to keep her. It's cheaper to keep her. See. When you get we getting careless with our love. Catch us sleeping. We'll be caught up in the wrong. I've been born again. Saturday night in the city. Party's on April. It's September. By the phone of July. Tell me why. And try me tonight. So the During his 10 years with Stax, Taylor released many charted albums such as Want It, One Soul Singer, in 1967, that peaked at number 26 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Who's Making Love, which peaked at number 42 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 5 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts, along with Raw Blues, that peaked at 126 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 24 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts, and Rare Stamps, that peaked at number 33 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Now all three of these albums was released in 1968. The Johnny Taylor philosophy continues, that peaked at 109 on the Billboard 200 charts and was released in 1969. One Step Beyond that peaked at 112 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 6 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts, which was released in 1971. Taylor and Silk, that peaked at number 54 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 3 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts and was released in 1973. And Super Taylor, that peaked at number 182 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 10 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts and was released in 1974. Now Taylor, he took charge of his career by starting his own production business named Tag Enterprise which stand for Taylor and God. Here, he will book and promote all of his shows. Now, Taylor was seeking for a new home after Stax Records closed, and he found one at Columbia Records. While with Columbia, Taylor released two albums with Ergasm, 
which peaked at number five on the Billboard 200 charts and number one on the Billboard Top R&B album charts and rated extraordinaire, which peaked at number 51 on the Billboard 200 charts and number six on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Now during this time with Columbia, his most notable songs was Somebody's Getting It. And I don't like what I see. Somebody's getting my action. Someone. Love is better in the AM. And Disco Lady. Shake it up, shake it down. Now this was Taylor's first pop number one set single and the song went certified platinum. Now following the popularity of Disco Lady, Taylor, he began pushing more disco songs, but his heart was not in this genre. As his recordings began to decline, Taylor's bad habits really increased. And as Taylor's record sales began to fall off in the late 70s, his intake of other substances began to rise. Johnny uh, loved to smoke, he loved to drink, and uh, he enjoyed a, a little snort here and there as well. I said, Johnny, you don't need all that to get high. No coke, none of that. I said, man, I want to get you high enough. Oh, well, I like this and I like that. He has spent over $300,000 in three months on drugs and that it was easy to hide things by doing drugs. You know, you stay high all the time, man. You, you don't, you know, you ain't worried about nothing. Now, he never did drugs around me. I mean, and, and I respected him for that, but the drugs affected him. In 1979, Taylor was arrested for cocaine possession and sentenced to five years probation. A year later, he was charged with drunk driving while possessing cocaine but beat the drug rap when the court ruled that his car search was illegal. Well, you know what Johnny told me? He said, I'll say if you're getting published, it's all right. So that's the way Johnny felt about it. Whether well, it was good or bad, he was in the news. He said my name out there so they know who I am. In 1980, Taylor made his final album for Columbia which soon dropped him from the label. Perhaps not coincidentally, he went to the hospital around the same time after suffering a heart attack. Now I just told him you need to slow up. You know, you just can't do everything. You can't try to party, do your shows, and think that nothing's gonna happen to you. He had this famous saying, well, you gotta die of something. <laughs> This led to a small stint at RCA Records before he resigned back to Columbia Records where he released three more charter albums. In 1978, he released the album Ever Ready, which peaked at 164 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 35 on the Billboard Top R&B albums charts. In 1979, he released the album She's Killing Me that peaked at number 54 on the Billboard Top R&B albums charts. And in 1980, he released the album A New Day that peaked at number 75 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Now Taylor had a short-lived contract with Beverly Glen Records in 1982, and he released the album Just Ain't Good Enough that peaked at number 19 on the Billboard Top R&B album charts. Now following a brief time with Beverly Glen Records, he signed with Malaco Records. After being heard by the label's founder at the funeral of blues singer ZZ Hills in the spring of 1984, with Malaco, Taylor had 10 charted albums. Now, some of Taylor's last charted songs was I'm So Proud. I'm so proud to have you for my I'm so Lady, my whole world is you. You're the woman of my dreams. And Still Crazy For You among plenty more songs. I think of me instead of us and try to in a sad foreshadowing taylor's last song was called so heaven in which he sings about being at a concert that features deceased soul musicians such as otis redding jackie wilson 
Marvin Gaye, and Sam Cooke, among many more. Now, during the 80s, Taylor was a DJ on KKDA, which was a radio station located in Dallas, Texas. Here, he went by the name The Whaler Johnny Taylor. Taylor, who was 66 years old, passed away of a heart attack on May 31st, 2000. Taylor's complex personal life was disclosed after his death. He was married and had nine children, some of whom he allegedly never acknowledged. The challenges connected with carrying out his will was discussed on the episode of The Will, Family Secrets Revealed. Taylor received the Rhythm and Blues Foundation Pioneer Award in 1999. In 2015, he was inducted into the National Rhythm and Blues Hall of Fame. And in 2022, he was inducted into the Blues Hall of Fame. Now, before we go, I have a few questions for you all. Do you think Johnny Taylor deserves to be into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? If so, why? Also, what is your favorite song from Johnny Taylor? <laughs>